Good evening, everyone. We are the delegates of Lambton School and are here today to present the genomics project which we have been a part of for the past six months. I acknowledge the outstanding details it can bring to our world of biological research. Now, this project was given to us by scientists working at the Wellcome Trust Sanger Institute and Bioinformatics in association with IRIS, where 60 schools across the UK took part in. The project involved creating genes which would allow researchers to develop better vaccines and more effective treatments. By decoding the gene of the whole whipworm, we're hoping to combat one of the world's most neglected tropical diseases. It's important to mention Peter Netson from Aarhus University, who infected himself. So whenever researchers needed access to really high quali quality DNA material, they had access to this because of Peter. The human whipworm is a roundworm parasite, which approximately affects around about 500 million people globally. It is mainly common in sub-Saharan Africa and Southeast Asia. It leads to children missing out on school and can lead to cognitive and mental and developmental problems, which effectively keeps the poor trapped in the poverty cycle. Also, another consequence of this is that it, it, leads, it leaves eggs in the large intestines of the infected person, which can stay there for a lifetime and effectively keep someone ill with this disease for a really long time. Thank you. During the course of this project, we have acquired several skills, including teamwork, communication, bioinformatics skills, perseverance and organisation. This has allowed us to get insight as to how scientists work in the real world to combat major disease outbreaks. Manual curation has enabled us to embed our prior biological knowledge into real-life problem solving in order to dominate this underfunded outbreak. Computer curation is difficult due to the complicated gene sequence, so manual human curation ensured more accuracy and precision, allowing us to evaluate the genes individually to correct the problems the computer had, cre had created for us during the process of curation. The understanding required for curation was difficult to achieve from an, auto from an automated response and needed human analytical skills, so manual curation was vital for a good genome decode. So far, we have managed to annotate over 2,750 genes. <coughs> To generate the sequence data, the whipworm DNA is extracted and then broken into shorter sections of sequences, and this goes into a sequencing machine which is dubbed in a, done in a laboratory. For the whipworm genome, scientists manage to get 29 million reads from the machine. Scientists are working to put back together the three chromosomes of Trichura trichurus. However, the genome needs to be annotated so we know where the genes are in the genome and how they are constructed. If we know the genes, then we know the proteins of the organism which will aid in the development of vaccines, enabling us to counter these infectious diseases with medicinal support and preventative measures. For any disease, the cause of the problem is necessary to identify before being able to search for a treatment or cure, and this is what the curation has helped us achieve. Apollo allows you to view multiple gene prediction models and compare them to sequence evidence to choose the best model. The data may suggest an alternative model that has not been predicted by any of the algorithms. Apollo allows you to create and edit new gene models in these cases. So curating genes <coughs> on the genome browser was quite difficult to begin with, but it was simplified after practicing on the software. So we were each allocated up to 10 tokens, and we systematically worked through them. Each token is a section on the genome, and we would look at the genes in the area. So how do we annotate a gene model? So we began by measuring out the evidence for our exons, which are coded regions, and the introns, our non-coding regions, the histograms represent evidence for our exons, and the light blue bar represents evidence for the introns. So generating gene models on the basis of this data. So we began by measuring, <coughs> so if a gene model has sufficient evidence, we would promote it into the scratch area, which is this yellow bar at the top. Um, we would selectively fix the start codon, ATG, which codes for the amino acid methionine, and the stop codons, ATA, TAA, TGA, and TAG, for each individual strand. Once we submitted our token onto Apollo, the gene models end up in a database where they're periodically checked by a computer system, which provided us feedback on things like insuffic insufficient short read support, no start codon, and no stop codon. So we would have to fix the strand number we provided alongside with the feedback. So once, once corrected, this would be resubmitted and this would have complete, we would have completed our token. 
So we've enjoyed the whole experience and feel honored to be a part of this project, helping scientists to understand this global health problem and hopefully contributing to improve life chances of millions of people around the world. Thank you.